Good morning, folks. Here with Good Allison morning. again. <laughs> She's got her coffee in hand. Yes. She's ready. I'm ready. All right, we're in First Peter chapter five today. It's a beautiful day. I mean, I can't believe it. it can't possibly be Rochester, New York area <laughs> in March. Seventy. Going up to seventy degrees today. Love it. We had the windows open yesterday. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's just so nice. Gonna do some outdoor yard work today. Uh -huh. Get things spruced up. Yep. In there. Mm -hmm. All right. So, thank you for joining us. Uh, just want to give a shout out to all. All the Spain all siblings. The, all the siblings. <laughs> so, so hi, Alyssa and Lorenzo in Milan, Italy, mm -hmm. and Caroline in London. Uh, in London, and Paul in Brooklyn, New York. Yep. Good morning. So. You're in the same state, of, at least, as one yeah. of you, <laughs> yeah. as your brother. Yeah. Although, that's probably like, what is that, six Pretty hours far. away? Yeah, it's not super close, but yeah. same <laughs> right. state. Same state. Yeah. Me. All right, so we're uh, we're finishing up First Peter, First Peter chapter 5, mm -hmm. and um, Allison's going to kick us off. All right. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder, a witness of Christ's sufferings, and one who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flocks that is under your care, serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be. Not greedy for money, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the, Christ, and when the chief shepherd appears, he will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Young men, in the same way, be submissive to those who are older. All of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. And then final greetings. With the help of Silas, whom I regard as a faithful brother, I have written to you briefly, encouraging you and testifying that this is the true grace of God. Stand fast in it. She who is in Babylon, chosen together with you, I send you her greetings, and so does my son Mark. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. All right, let's uh, pray. Father, thank you so much for this beautiful morning, for the sunshine coming through the windows, for the warmth, uh, spring warmth, and for also just uh, the promise of new life. Um, as, as winter loses its grip, we see things uh, sprouting up, things turning green. Uh, but we also know, Lord God, as we uh, are entering this season and entering into Holy Week, uh, what you had to go through in order for us to have new life. And so, Lord God, bring us to the, to the joy of the resurrection uh, on Easter Sunday. Lord God, uh, may more and more people be drawn to you that they know the gift of your grace and mercy. We praise in his mighty name. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, I think, you know, the, the kind of the theme uh, continuing through here is suffering and submission. Mm -hmm. So submission kind of is carried through. And so reminding those who are elders or pastors in the church that they have to be submissive to the chief shepherd, which is Christ, mm -hmm. right? And, and that their life should... Uh, reflect that. So, you've only had a few pastors, and <laughs> one, mm -hmm. one of them, your dad, which is kind of probably awkward. Mm -hmm. I don't know. No. <laughs> in there. So, um, but you see in ministry, unfortunately, many people have fallen, right? Mm -hmm. And you get those are very high profile things. So, very important uh, that we are constantly reminding ourselves we're submissive to the chief shepherd and he just gives them some examples of how somebody could fall not greedy for money but eager to serve not lording it over those entrusted you but being examples to the flock 
So we're supposed to, and, and that's really the way people learn. That's the way our kid, you know, kids learn, right? They learn from observation and uh, following an example. So, I mean, you can say anything you want. People can say all kinds of stuff, anything they want, but if it's not backed up with example, it doesn't, doesn't really matter mm -hmm. in there. I don't know, like, what is that like in the nursing field as far as, like, trying to, I don't know, I get, like, you can't really um, demonstrate, a, well, maybe you can demonstrate sometimes to a patient, like, here's what you're supposed to be doing mm -hmm. in there. How does that work out? Do some people listen and some don't? <laughs> um, I think that sometimes an event where, like, can be so life-changing that it causes a, a patient to be like, I need to change my whole lifestyle. Like, I don't want to ever be in this situation again. Um, like, what can I do to make sure that this doesn't happen again? And I think that that's more often in people who, like, it's just like one big event. But if someone has been struggling with their health for a while or has had a bad habit for a while that has, like, caused them to have a lot of health problems, those are, people are more likely to be like, well, this is the way I am. And as much as you can try and educate, like, okay, well, you could change this habit or you can do this differently, it's kind of falling on, you know, deaf ears because no. they're just like, they're well, set. They're set in their ways and they're not really going to. Yeah, well, that's, unfor that's yeah. unfortunate. But for some people, yeah, some people, they, they are willing to do, you know. And then you can kind of hot, show them some different yeah, things. Yeah, you too. can like demonstrate how to change and all that. But. So I think for all of us, we always have to have an openness to learning from Christ. Uh, and so for some, I, I think it is kind of an analogy in a spiritual sense, because some people have a big event occur in their life, and it really says, I want, you know, it changes them, I right. want to follow the Lord. Uh, others, it's a slow, lifelong process, but I think others, it's a slow hardening mm -hmm. towards the things of the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's like maybe they were softer at a, at a younger age and now they've kind of, they've gone down this path and they're hardening themselves to the things of the Lord. So yeah. I think we got to be very careful about that. It's just yeah. like, this is just the way I am. I'm not going to change, maybe, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And there. So anyway, so submission to the Lord. And then young men, he talks about being submissive to those who are older mm -hmm. and clothe yourself with humility towards one another. God opposes, opposes the prayer proud but gives grace to the humble um, and I like this verse here I think this is a very important verse for the society in which we live in and what's going on uh, that I see amongst young people uh, college students high school students cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you mm -hmm. and it seems like uh, these incidents of anxiety depression all these kind of things very ramped up. That's not your particular field in which you're working in there, right. in there. but uh, I'm sure you see it to an extent. And everybody, yeah. yeah. And the pandemic has kind of exacerbated yeah. these things, so these anxiety and rip. So turn to the Lord. We need the Lord's strength in the midst of all of this, and He will. It says, cast all your anxieties on Him. You know, don't hold on to them, and 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 also I think you know beyond that. When we say cast all your anxieties on him, uh, for he cares for you, it's that God also gives us, Jesus also gives us Christian community in which we can talk to one another, in which we can cast our anxieties on one another. Uh, and that's really, you know, it's really casting anxieties on him because he's provided you this community of people in which to, to walk with you and care for you throughout the troubles that you're, that you're facing or whatever the anxieties are that you might have in your life. So I encourage you, really, it's important that we're all plugged into community. It's mm -hmm. so important. And uh, I encourage you to have that community and, and, and really uh, press into that. I think it's easy for us to become isolated. I know some people haven't really been out for almost like a year, really interacting with anybody, or for a year, literally. Mm -hmm. And that's really not healthy. So. Uh, encourage you to plug into community um, and he reminds us that hey you know what this isn't uh, a game the devil roar, uh, is prowls around like a roaring lion seeking for whom he may devour now in Christ 
the devil can't the can't he, he can't touch you. Um, you are under the the grace and forgiveness of Jesus Christ. But you don't want to step outside of that grace and it can be torn apart because uh, that's what he's you know the 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 thief comes to steal to kill and destroy. Satan is a thief. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. This is no game. He wants to destroy those who would be followers. Uh, but you, he, can't, uh, he can't harm you, those who are in Christ. So remain firm in Christ, and um, he, will, he will guide you through this. Uh, so resist him, standing firm in the faith. Remember, see, see that? Standing firm in your faith and trust in Jesus. Because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. Well, we talked about that a little bit yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. About the, uh, you know, what we might go through and call persecution or not yeah. being treated right, and then what our brothers and sisters in Christ. And um, I was reading an article recently, like, they think that the fastest growing church in the world right now is in what country? You, you probably, where, where, like, just take a guess. Where, where do you think is the fastest growing? China. No, that might be in terms of numbers, I don't know. but um, percentage-wise, what I read was the fastest-growing church in the world is in Iran. Oh, which is like shocking. Yeah, in, in there, percentage-wise, I'm sure there's like more people yeah. coming to faith in, in, in China. Yeah, in that's there. great. In there, so under intense persecution. In yeah, um, and he just uh, talks about. Um, you know, he's, you're going to go through this for a little while. This is our pilgrimage in the earth, and he's going to restore you uh, and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Verse, verse 10, strong, firm, and steadfast. Yeah. You'll be able to go through this. And then, uh, interesting, he talks about Silas. Uh, remember, uh, Silas was one of the companions with Paul for a while. And then he also talks about Mark in these closing greetings. Remember Mark, he was with uh, Paul and Barnabas on the first missionary journey, and Mark was with them, and then Mark bailed halfway through the uh, missionary journey. And when they were going to go on their second missionary journey, uh, Paul, Barnabas wanted to bring Mark along again, and Paul's like, no, he bailed, <laughs> we're not bringing him again. And they had a disagreement. And then Paul and Silas went on the second missionary journey, and um, Barnabas took Mark on a different missionary mm -hmm. journey. But later on, Paul and Mark are, are reconciled, and, and uh, Paul sees a great value in Mark. But somehow he's connected up with Peter for a period of time. And he talks about um, she who's in Babylon, and there's kind of a different interpretations in that. Was he really in Babylon, or is he using that figuratively, like in the book of Revelation, when okay. it talks about Babylon? So we're not quite sure. So some people think he was in Babylon for a period of time, or he may be in Jerusalem, and using this as kind of a code. Uh, I, mean, I mean, not Jerusalem, Rome. He may be in Rome, and using this as a code, because um, church history says that eventually Peter is crucified, uh, upside down mm -hmm. under Nero in Rome. So that, that uh, we're not sure if that's kind of a code in there or he actually was in Babylon. So some people think he was in Babylon for a period of time. Uh, so interesting, uh, just in these little closings, get little bits of information about yeah. stuff. Sometimes I wish there was more. Yeah, I know. Like, like what's going on? Right. You know, like, give us some more detail <laughs> on that. But, we're given what we need to know for salvation, and that's what he says, actually, in uh, that closing thing. It says, um, encouraging you, in verse 12, and testifying that this is the true grace of God. Stand fast in it. So it gives what we need to know for salvation and grace. I don't know. Is there anything else that stuck out at you in, it, in all of this? Um, no, I mean, that, I think that pretty much covers it. I think I like that. I, I can get this sense of, like, He's trying to like motivate and encourage and just like boost up this, you know, these people and especially that like ten verse ten and eleven like when he's just like, um, like after you suffer a little while he's talking about you know this whole book you're gonna suffer you need to do all these things he's like but after all this like you will be restored and you know and make you strong firm and steadfast and I think that's just encouraging I think he 
he's just yeah. trying to get them to be like, you know, hang in there and like yeah. keep doing what you're doing and it'll be worth it in the end. Right. So you're kind of pilgrims here. Yeah. Year. <laughs> yeah. Great, Lucas. So thank you so much for joining us. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much for a beautiful day you blessed us with, for the gift of life that we have in and through Jesus. And encourage us to go forth this day to live with confidence that you're with us and to love the people you've placed in our lives. So, Lord God, help us to love our neighbor well and be representatives of Jesus, uh, who is our great Savior and who has forgiven us and holds us tightly in his arms. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Have a great day, everyone.